Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorials in quantum statistics. So this is tutorial number 12. We're talking about the multiplicity for a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, or which is also the classical multiplicity. So the previous video was rule number 6 for calculating multiplicities. Now, so finally we're getting on to something that's very useful. Once we've calculated the, the, the multiplicity, we're able to calculate the actual distribution functions themselves. So we need three occupancy functions, and this will be the first function. So let's define the parameters of our problem. We're talking about non-interacting particles. This should tell you, at least at this stage, that there is no limit on the, uh, the number of particles per state. That's because they are non-interacting. If they were interacting, then there would be a limit on the number of particles per state and that these are distinguishable particles. So you should also know at this stage that if they're distinguishable, the maximum multiplicity is now greater than that if they were identical particles. So we're talking about, we should be talking about quite a large multiplicity because there's no limit on the number of particles per state and also they are distinguishable particles. So let's see what we have. Let's suggest that we have capital N particles in total. So you have capital N particles, which is broken. So N is equal to the sum over S of N sub S. So what we're saying here is we're going to put N sub S particles together and break it down. You know, so put them in. So in state one, for example, put N sub S particles. In state two, put N sub two particles in state three, put n sub three particles and so on. So n sub one in state one, n sub two in state two, and n sub s in state s. Now you should ask yourself what sort of states are we talking about here? Are we talking about macro states, micro states, what are we talking about? But the answer is we're talking about macro states here because this is the most general or most ambiguous way of fully defining exactly the parameters or fully defining exactly what's going on by saying well there are 10 particles in state 1 there are 77 particles in state 2 there are 66 particles in state whatever without saying well particle there are 66 if you said 66 particles in, in state 1 and of those 66 one of them is in microstate one, ten of them are in microstate two, and the rest are in microstate three, then we would have the microscopic description. Here, this is just the macroscopic description. So each of these macro states has the following. So there are G1 micro states in macro state one. For the n sub 1 particles. So, there. However, something similar happens for each of the other macro states. So, we could say that there are g sub 2 macro states, or excuse me, micro states, in macro state 2 for the n sub 2 particles. Or to generalize, there are g sub s micro states in macro state. S for the n sub s particles. Right, I hope that's pretty clear to you. I've probably labelled the point at this stage. So let's just give an example, and once again, I know I've laboured this, but I'm going to do it again because I think the more times you see it in different ways, the better. So remember the max macroscopic multiplicity. is n factorial. We know that at this stage. That's something we've seen quite a number of times. So let's say, for example, we have n is equal to 5 is equal to a the first five letters of the alphabet. So let's say, for example, that g sub s is equal to 1. So s means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but now I'm saying that there is one 
state, one micro state for every macro state. I'm just doing this for uh, completeness. So I'm saying that I can only put one letter in each of the states, as you would expect for this sort of particle. So that means we have the following arrangement. We have n1 is equal to 1, and g sub 1 is equal to 1, n sub 2 is equal to 1, g sub 2 is equal to 1, n sub 3 is equal to 1, g sub 3 is equal to 1, n sub 4 is equal to 1, g sub 4 is equal to 1, n sub 5 is equal to 1, and g sub 5 is equal to 1. Alright, now let's say for example I said g sub 3 is equal to 4. That would mean that in this particular state there are four places that you'd put all the letters. Actually let's say it's 5. Let's say g sub, g sub 3 was equal to 5. So there are five states in g sub 3. It would mean that that particular state on its own could accommodate all of the particles. And it wouldn't need any of the other states. However, just for argument's sake, I'm restricting this to 1 so that we in fact need all five states in order to accommodate all five particles. So, let's just give an example as to how you may fill this. You may fill it as follows. There are three, four, five particles. So in order to fill, in order to fill this, just bear with me now one moment. In order to make, let's make one state. Let's make any one of these states. So let's put, well let's pick D. D is the first particle. And then let's pick C. Let's pick, I don't know, A. B and E. So there is that, that this here is a single microstate. It's also a macrostate, I suppose, as well. But it's a, well, it's a macrostate and a microstate. But of course, there are lots of different ways to, to, to arrange this. In fact, there are five factorial ways of making something similar to that, as we know well at this stage. So the multiplicity is equal to five factorial. So where we put one particle per state, and one particle per state, correct. Now, I know I'm laboring it, I know I'm laboring it, just going to have to bear with me for a moment and see how this works. So, now we're going to move on, and we're, we're actually going to come up with the multiplicity function. So as we said a moment ago, we have capital N total particles, and that's broken down into N sub 1 in state 1, N sub 2 in macro state 2, N sub 3 in macro state 3 the whole way up to n sub s in macrostate s. Okay, so what we're saying is that there are s macrostates. There are s macrostates. Alright? So, let's look at the macrostates. Here's the first macrostate, the second one, the third, the fourth. There is the s macrostate. S macro, first macro, second macro, and so on. Alright? Macro state, macro box, call it what you like. So we put n1 into this box, we put n2 into this box, n sub 3 into this box, we put n sub s into this box here. But of course there are micro states inside each of these boxes. So let's look at the first box here. Let's say that there are, there we go, okay, so this is G sub 1, that's the first box, the second box, okay. So this here, there are G sub 1 micro. So we've put N sub 1 into the first macro box, and in of those, we have to put them into G sub 1 micro states. Similarly over here, this is G sub 2, so G sub 2 micro states, and we, we just put, we put N, N sub 2 particles into the second macro state, or macro box, and then we have to distribute them among the G sub 2 micro states, and so on across the board. All right. Now to get on to the meat of it. This is this is the tricky part. Each of the 
n sub s particles in the sth macro state can be chosen in n sub s factorial ways and result in the same state. What does that mean? Let's think about it. Let's say I have three particles A, B and C and I choose them. I want A, B and C. There. What I'm telling you is that I can choose each of these particles in a different order and get A, B, C each time. So let's say, for example, I choose A first, then B, then C. Then I choose A, uh, 1, 3, 2, let's see this. Two, three, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. So what I'm saying here is that of these three particles, depending on which one I choose first, I can choose them in six. I have six different ways of choosing the same three particles, but yet getting the same state. Now the n factorial gives me every one of these states. But look, of these six states, these are six states, but they're all the same. So the n factorial here has overcounted. So in this case, n factorial is three factorial is equal to six. But it's pretty clear that I've overcounted. So I need to reduce it by how many? Well, I need to reduce it by n sub s factorial. All right, I need to reduce it by n sub s factorial. So let's say, for example, so just like Just, by the way, um, this is actually n sub s factorial because we're just talking about one group of them. So just, just like identical particles we've overcounted with n factorial and should instead reduce it by n sub 1 factorial multiplied by n sub 2 factorial all the way up to n sub s factorial alright so that means that all we have is as follows for the multiplicity we started off equal to capital N factorial. And we say that's incorrect because we've overcounted. So that becomes N factorial over N1 factorial, N sub 2 factorial, N sub 3 factorial, which can be written as capital N factorial over pi over S N sub S factorial. And we've seen this already. All right, and we're nearly there. So this is most of the occupancy function but it's not all of the occupancy function. So I've, I'm going to do this very quickly now. Okay, we have that, we'll have it finished. So, in each macro box S, we have N sub S particles, and G sub S microstates but because there is no limit on the number of particles per state then each macro box has 
an additional G sub S to the N sub S states. Now just go back to the rules and you'll see, I'm just, just bear with me a moment and see which rule that is. So that is multiplicity function rule number five. So that means that this is the macro state, so macro is equal to capital N factorial over pi n sub s factorial. That is the macro state. But now we have to increase it by this for every one of the macro states. So s total or the microscopic description is n factorial, n factorial outside of g sub s to the power of n sub s divided by n sub s factorial. This this is the max Boltzmann multiplicity. Alright, so I know I, I did that very slowly, but I wanted to build it up slowly because if you understand the Maxwell Boltzmann, then you can definitely understand in a lot quicker time the Fermi Dirac and Bose Einstein multiplicity functions. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and if you're in a good mood, please click an ad. Goodbye.